David Bellavia joins me to talk about receiving the Medal of Honor and his worst investing mistake. Is this your first time on the floor of the NYSE? This is my first time. What's the feeling? Honestly, I've been watching too many movies. And I, I was like, first they got a vacuum cleaner because the floor is not covered in paper. Uh, no one's screaming at each other. I don't see any cigarette butts or so. Evidently, I need to update my uh, my you know education on the floor here. But people seem very calm and professional and digital. So I was kind of shocked by that. I was shocked the first time I was on the floor yeah. too. Um, so can you describe what the experience was like to receive the Medal of Honor? It's overwhelming. It changes your life in, entirely. It holds you to a higher accountability. There's things that I used to do, um, you know, maybe just talking to you. I, I might want to tell a joke or be funny, but you can't because people see the award first. They don't really care about you as much, but this award has so much reverence and the people that wear it, are, are they have reverence for them as well. So it changes your life forever. and. We just have to be good enough to hold it, and that's what I'm trying to do. That's truly remarkable. I want to ask you, how did you achieve financial independence? Like, when was that moment? And that means, like, when you paid off your debt or put away savings, any of that. Well, you know, the Army has an incredible uh, way to encourage you to pay your bills on time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, if you don't, we have what's called the star card, right? It's a credit line that they give you for your... A, you know, whether it's clothing or the things you want for your personal. If you miss that one month, your entire chain of command knows. Everyone knows that you missed your star card payment and there's like a rollout and they put it on the wall. That'll humble you, right? That'll get you to come up with a plan. But you know, the other thing is that we learned really quick to, um, this is what you have to live with uh, and this is what you, what, you know, what you're going to do with your future. You're always thinking about tomorrow because, you know, when you go from the military to civilian life, it's a huge transition. There's a lot of unknowns. So find a professional, find a fund, find a, a company that will guide you along it because you've got to worry about a whole host of things. It's not just your future and your retirement. You've got to worry about your, you know, security and your family and everything else. So. That's one of the things that they really drill into your head early in the military. I mean, guilt is a great way to teach financial literacy. Oh, yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> Have, were you investing when you were in the military? I was uh, just a part of a thrift savings plan where they basically took a mutual, you know, it's a, it's a money market. Um, but today, I, I have to tell you that things are a lot more advanced. I feel a lot more confident that you know, you could have your, your, the big chunk that you're going to leave to the professionals, but there are so many different companies now that allow you to just, you know, go with your gut. Um, when it comes to defense spending, right, we're, we know the new equipment when it's coming down the road and, and we know, uh, you know, if you're a patriotic person, you want to invest in American companies or defense contractors or folks that are into energy exploration, it gives you the freedom to, to be able to play. I don't think I would have had the confidence to do that, if, you know, with, with the tools that are out there. You could take a little chunk and, and, and see uh, for yourself what you know what you can do. Yeah. Was there any was there ever a time where you had a investing mistake? Oh and what was God. it? <laughs> Were you serious? We're gonna do this? I mean well, I could we I made many mistakes, you know, uh, many mistakes. I, I think there's a tendency to see this the day trading phenomenon of the late nineties and the early two thousands made a lot of people think that this was a roulette wheel and that a penny stock can, you, know, you hear the great stories. And when you're young and you look at how much you bring in, yeah, you love to have a 400% return. This is great. Is this common? Um, yeah, so yeah, I've, I've fallen for, for that in my younger years. And, and, and today, it, it almost becomes, you know, you're, you're heightened to, to those types of promises. Returns aren't ever going to be 250%. You know? And if they come from an email, Definitely stay away from it. That's a great yeah, that's a great No stock tip comes through an email. Yeah, right. So what can CEOs learn from the military or from people in the military? Well, first of all, hire veterans. That's the best thing they could do because, uh, you know, not only are we organized, um, but we solve problems. Uh, we're there to, you know, we take uh, asymmetrical environment and difficult situations and, you know, 
a lot of people, especially in finance and in business, they want a 100% risk assessment. I need to know with 85% certainty before I make a decision. A lot of times decisions don't get made because you're never going to have 85%. We make decisions sometimes with 5%, right? I know 5% of the situation, but I know enough about my job, I know enough about my people and my environment where this is good enough. And sometimes good enough is all you have. And you might miss out on a really good return. You might miss out on an opportunity because you're trying to be too cautious. And so there's a balance. You don't want to go crazy, but at the same time, sometimes good enough is good and it keeps you from missing out on an opportunity. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you.